Hello viewers, today I am going to demonstrate you how to uh, reduce uh, this uh, difficult distal radius uh, fracture which I call the pronator type uh, uh, pronator fracture of distal radius in skeletally immature patient because there are occasions where pronator quadratus can be interposed and it can be quite challenging to reduce and sometimes it may require open reduction. So I hope uh, that today we do not have to open it and I will show you how I reduce them and if at all I decide to fix with a K wire. I will show you how to fix it with a K wire. I have already uploaded a video of uh, Faisal injury and the principles of passing the K wire will be pretty much similar to what I have uh, you know the video that I have already uploaded whether you take it an adult distal radius fracture or uh, Faisal injury of distal radius. So I will not dwell much upon that. I will put the link in the YouTube description and you can watch them separately if you want to learn how I pass the K wire in probably most times at one go. So today my attempt is to take you through in a step by step fashion as how to reduce it and secure with K wire if needed in these difficult fractures. So this is our patient, he is a 14 year old uh, boy who unfortunately fell and sustained this injury and you can see this, this is uh, the typical fracture pattern that you will see, it is usually a transverse fracture. Um, there is some shortening. Uh, pronator quadratus is um, attached just across here and is one of the commonest structure to get entrapped which prevents reduction. Hence some people call it pronator type fracture as well. So we will show you how to reduce it and how to fix it with K wire if necessary. So this is our theta setup for this particular procedure. Uh, so patient is supine, we have uh, kept the tunicate but you do not need a tunicate because you are not planning to open it up. But however, there are occasions where pronator quadratus can be interposed and then you may have to open and in that case I think it is a good idea to keep the tunicate on and if you need it you can at least inflate it. Now position, I have angled the table slightly and uh, I do that for most cases when I am operating on hand. The CM is going to come from the front and uh, my uh, CM image screen is here so that I can have uh, access to the images all the time. So there are two ways you can approach this, one is to you know, you know get everything ready just in case you need the wire and the other option is that you can reduce the fracture and then paint and drape it. I think this works out easier because it is all ready and if you need a wire uh, you, you do not uh, risk losing the position of reduction and you can pass fire the wire pretty much straight away. So next thing is I want to show you the deformity uh, of this fracture. Now looking at this hand, uh, it does not look too bad at all, um, but there will be occasions where the distal fragment is completely off and it is donated like this. And these fractures are the most difficult fractures to reduce where we use the principle of increasing the deformity and then reducing it uh, so that you are able to get a good reduction. And even on AP, or looking from the top, it does not look bad at all. But as I said, this is one fracture which can be quite difficult to reduce and keep it in reduced position. And there will be a small percentage in which the pronated quadratus will be interposed and that is usually seen in patients where the displacement is more. It buttonholes to the pronated quadratus and irrespective of how hard you try, you cannot get a satisfactory reduction. So, First thing that you do is to take initial CRM images. Um, so if you look at the AP and if you look at the lateral, uh, there is almost more than 80% cortical opposition of this uh, particular fracture both in AP and lateral. So it is not too bad. For a younger patient, even if you put the hand in plaster in this particular position, it will remodel beautifully. Now this child is nearing 14, so it is reaching its skeletal maturity. So and in India, parents want the bone to be absolutely straight and this is one thing I have a struggle in India is to in, you know explain the patients that x-ray does not have to be perfect all the time. They want most times perfect reduction otherwise they will keep asking questions. So our next goal will be to reduce it and see take further images and assess its stability and secure it with wire if necessary. So traction, counter traction is all you need in this particular case. However, if this patient had complete, say for example there was no contact 
and the distal fragment was overriding the proximal fragment in that case i would have i would have exaggerated the deformity and then reduce it and then give the longitudinal traction if it is bionated that both of them are completely not in contact don't start with longitudinal traction in that case you first reduce it so that at least there is some contact and then you start the traction and if you give the traction for around at least 2 to 3 minutes most of the times it will fall into an acceptable reduction position so we will stay like this so let us apply some traction and then we will take some images and then we will join you back so these are the images after 2 to 3 minutes of traction and counter traction and you can see everything has fallen back in place and this looks beautiful well, as soon as i am letting the traction off on the ap it looks okay the lateral it's losing uh, its position uh, if i was in england i would probably treat him in a plaster uh, patients uh, understand it's far more easier to explain here i'm just going to pass probably one wire to secure it so that it looks perfect on x rays now i have already uploaded a video on how to pass a k wire for a physical injury in pediatrics i think the principle will still be the same so if you want to um learn the detail uh, i would suggest that uh, please watch that video and i will put uh, the details on the thumbnail but it's pretty straight forward now the question here is whether do we go through the physis or avoid the physis i think if you are good at it and if you can get it at one go then i don't think there is any harm in going through the physis however if you are learning and uh, if you think you are doing more than one attempt then try to be extra physical you know avoid the physis stay slightly proximal and then try to pass a wire in such a way that you are not anywhere close to the physis so we have passed the uh, two wires one from the radial and one from the dorsal avoiding the physis now if you want to learn the tricks how you can pass this wire with minimum efforts so akash took two effort and i passed this in single attempt so if you know how to orient your wires then you should be able to pass it on one go and if you want to learn that i will put the details on the thumbnail i have already described in other videos so i am not going uh, through that video again and it will be repetition so i'll show you how we have reduced it and we have done a dynamic screening the hand is absolutely stable so we'll keep the plaster um, below elbow for few weeks and then we will keep this uh, wire for four weeks and then we'll take this off at four weeks and get him going so if you see this uh, this looks pretty perfect everything looks pretty good we have ordered the physis but even if you have to go through once or twice i don't think it does any harm avoiding the physis is slightly tricky but if you gain experience i am sure you should be able to do that laterally there is a small step but and it's negligible looks pretty perfect so we'll keep the immobilization for four weeks um, the only advantage of putting the wire is then you don't need to up the elbow um up the plaster above the elbow so you can give a below elbow uh, plaster for four weeks at four weeks you can take it off and you can get the patient going so this is how you um do uh, the reduction and percutaneous fixation of uh, what i call a pronator type distal radius fracture so we was this was a demonstration on how to do this uh, reduction uh, of this uh, pronator type distal radius fracture in a uh, kids now when it reduction is easy it becomes it comes like you know very easily but if it is completely uh, of the opposition is gone then it can be quite a challenging fracture to reduce and requires a lot of experience especially if it is gone completely if i find a case then i will definitely upload a separate video of how i reduce uh, that kind of fracture so in that you have to increase the deformity and then reduce it once there is some opposition just longitudinal traction and counter traction does the job um you could treat this uh, with plaster however uh, as i have explained uh, my concerns of explaining the patient and uh, and the parent uh, it can be quite uh, challenging sometimes in india and that is the reason i decided to uh, secure it with two k wires the only advantage is that you don't need to include the elbow when you are giving the plaster and it's minimally invasive you can take the wires off in two weeks time and patient will be pretty back to normal 
uh, whether to avoid the physis and as I said if you take once or twice I do not think it really matters, but if you can avoid the physis while passing the wire that is brilliant. So, I hope watching this video will give you idea about how to manage these fractures and if at all you decide to put a K wire, how to put the K wire with minimal um, difficulty. So, please give us a thumbs up because that is the only source of inspiration for keep you know for us to keep going. Uh, there is no monetary benefit uh, from uh, this channel, uh, your compliments and your you know, good words are the only thing that keeps us going. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.